Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. I'm your host, Dave Kuzminski, and we are live in the studio with uh, actually a, an old friend of mine, and actually uh, we kind of grew up on the same street together here. So, But uh, we have uh, Mr. Michael Archer, who is the Director of uh, Construction Engineering for Snyder uh, Civil. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Good morning, Dave. How are you? Uh, good. I appreciate you coming down, Mike. Excellent. So anyway... Uh, you know, you're you're deeply entrenched now in, in the water industry. So, you know, just kind of rolling back the calendar to just a few years and just how did you uh, embark on deciding a career path? Sure. No, you know, looking back at it, back in the late 1980s, early 1990s as a young kid growing up in Portland, yep. spent a lot of time outside in the sandbox with construction <laughs> toys and watching things get built in the family business. And for some reason, it uh, took a hold of me, and I always had that interest in construction. Yeah. So as I grew up and you know made it through middle school and high school, yep. it came time to determine a career path. Okay. And at that point, you know, I did get a lot of um, support from the my family. Yeah. You know, pers- um, you know, uh, pushing me to go to college and yep, further yep. further my education, and yep, yep. it worked out well. So at that time, it was a decision, you know, what do you, what do you want to do? And I, I wanted to stay in construction. I thought I wanted to, you know, do a, like a, a heavy civil career path in yep. infrastructure, site construction, uh, utilities, and um, was able to um, go to the University of Maine for their construction management program. Okay. And through their construction management program, was able to get... Uh, Hooked up with a large heavy civil contractor. Okay. And basically in the summer of 2000, Uh uh, that was my first um, step into big time uh, contracting. Uh Uh-huh. And at a very young age, I was able to see that if a person was just willing to to work hard, put in the extra effort, the opportunities were endless. Sure. And... um, now you work for a large company. You work for Waters Construction. Is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I did uh, 20, 20 years of uh, of uh, work for Waters Construction. They're a heavy civil contractor out of uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Yep. They do uh, heavy highway work, uh, paving, concrete, mm-hmm. and commercial site development. Okay. So I started off working for them as a uh, assistant project engineer, uh, assistant foreman, and I was able to get a good uh, blend of time between learning the office end of the business uh-huh. and also spending time in the field with the uh, with the field crews learning how to actually build the jobs. Sure. And um, after working there a couple of years, uh, I got the opportunity to to move up and become a full time field superintendent for them and actually build my own projects. Okay. And just it it grew it grew exponentially from there. Sure. Um, as more and more opportunities came available and people were starting to retire and get out of the business. The company had no choice to, or had no choice other than work with some of the younger people and try to develop them. Yep. And, you know, seeing that's how I came up through the ranks. I'm kind of starting to do that now with my own people because okay. I, I see the need and I see the sure. benefit of taking young, talented hardworking people yep. and molding them into what you want for success in, in your particular company. Sure, sure, absolutely. Because you guys did a lot of work on 91, Route 2, 84. Uh, yeah. When you, when you started doing it, I can remember those water trucks up on, the, <laughs> on 91 there. For a guy. Yeah, you know, there's, there's not, um, I, I can't say that I've walked every mile of highway in Connecticut, but I've walked a, a fair amount of each one of them. And there's certain ones that I, I, I definitely don't miss being on. Yeah. So working here now at Snyder Civil Construction, yep. it's still a, uh, a construction company, yep. but we're not out on um, the major highways doing highway rehabilitation. Sure. We're not doing bridge deck rehabilitations. We're not building sites for schools or hospitals yep. so even though it's it's still the word construction it's just sure. a, it's a whole different market and it's been uh it's been it's been a nice change well i you know from the from that standpoint okay i know um you know uh, don and snyder have gone to um uh, you know 
uh, developed a, a, a huge niche in the water industry and the, and the wastewater industry. And I think, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about your day job now as far as uh, what does that consist of as far as that goes? Sure. No, and a little back history on um, Don Snyder and myself is Don and I both grew up here in Portland. We've known each other since probably third grade is the the last uh, or the first time that we could remember, uh, you know, being friends and being in class together. So yeah, yeah. here we are at uh, 41 years old. We've known each other for long time. a long time. And um, as Don grew his engineering company, he, he saw the need for better contractors to serve the the water utilities that sure. he was working for. Yep. And he had the opportunity to start doing some contracting and the work kept coming and he he made the realization that um he needed to to uh staff up the company and yep. have someone to actually manage it and run it to yep. be able to sustain it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple of years ago, he and I started talking about the opportunity and whether or not we thought it would work and if it was uh, something that, um, you know, we felt like we could make happen. And it took a took a while for us to, to feel comfortable with it. But uh, in the fall of um, 2021, I I left my, my previous company and uh, came to work for Don and yep. came on as his director of construction for what became... Snyder Civil Construction. Yep. So as uh, as we sit here today, almost the end of 2022, our construction company is of almost officially one year old because it was yep. essentially launched as its own entity January 1st on 2022. Okay. So sure. Um, in a year's time, we've we've come a long way. Um, we've continued to further our relationships with our clients. We've definitely learned a lot in business. We've learned a lot in means and methods. Um, we've grown our staff. Uh, and fortunately, for where we sit right now, our 2023 outlook is, is looking very positive. Awesome. That's, that's great. And now, you know, obviously, you know, dealing with a lot of the, uh, as you know, I've got a you know, fairly deep history in the water industry as far as that goes. So uh, you're doing a lot for a, a lot of the, uh, the larger utilities throughout the state, you know, between uh, – Connecticut Water, Aquarion, and, and, and MDC, and so forth. So, um, you know, fostering those relationships and, you know, designing their needs, because as you know, uh, uh, you know, technology is always changing, you know, and you got to stay up with the, uh, uh, I want to say keep up with the Joneses, but you got to, you know, face reality and, and, you know, be in the game for sure. Oh, very well said. And, you know, in my short time that I've been here, you see how um, as standards change in the water supply industry and the water utilities have to meet higher and higher levels of um, quality sure they have no choice but to reinvest money into their their system and provide a better product to their customers well as you know the you know one of the other you know conundrums you know throughout any industry but you know uh, you know uh, critical infrastructure is uh, something that has been ignored um, you know throughout years and years and you know now the, the the chickens are coming home to roost so to speak and you've got to uh you know maintain that infrastructure okay if you want to produce you know quality water or you know you know stay up with the technology for sure oh absolutely you know the, the people that rely on a uh, um a water utility to provide their drinking water it's just to assume that it's going to be there for them every day and that it's safe for them to drink and there's sure. plenty of it and the the, the pressure's there and you know, that's just what people expect now. Sure. And, um, you know, and every utility is different, you know, in their respects. You know, some are basically, uh, you know, investor-owned. Some are, are, are small uh, municipal systems like we are in here in Portland. Uh, but we also have the, uh, you know, the quasi-publics like Regional Water and, and uh, uh, MDC and so forth. And each one of those have their own uh, niche uh, as far as that goes, not only in customer base, but uh, requirements in the types of uh you know, uh, systems that you're designing, you know, via pump houses being transmission lines or whatever. So tell us a little bit about the, uh, the different sizes and scopes of, uh, you know, the different, uh, utilities. Sure. No, I mean, the work that we've been doing the last year or so for Aquarian and Connecticut water have been, you know, everything from small mechanical and HVAC upgrades, which may be a small 
couple thousand dollar project up to um, million dollar pump stations and million dollar chemical feed upgrades at a water treatment plant. Sure. So there's a large range of of work scopes out there and yep. you might be somewhere for an afternoon you might be somewhere for for six months yes and uh, doing the full buildings is kind of a is a is a neat thing to see because you see something from the ground up you yes. know the day one the tree clearer comes in and yeah and clears the site for you and yep. uh, six months later you're you're watching the landscaper put the, the grass down and plant the, the trees and, yeah exactly and you've got a finished product yeah exactly you know and that that's the type of thing you know one of the things obviously is is technology changes and you know one of the um things that that also mandates a lot of changes within the industry is is the regulatory mandates uh you know uh, treatment systems that we used uh, 30 years ago are are no longer acceptable practices you know you're you're getting into a situation again you have to upgrade that infrastructure to accommodate uh, those regulatory obligations uh, and so forth to produce safe drinking water. And, you know, the, the techniques uh, throughout the, throughout the years has, has changed drastically. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the amount of equipment that I've seen in, in the treatment facilities is kind of mind blowing, you know, as someone that never had exposure to a water utility other than knowing there's a water main in the ground and yep. maybe a water service going to a house or a business i never saw how water was made you know i guess it was just a false assumption that it comes out of a reservoir it gets something added to it and then it goes to a tank and goes to distribution and yep. it couldn't have been farther from farther from reality until I was able to get into a full treatment facility or get into a uh, a chemical treatment building and see how much technical stuff it takes to to make safe drinking water for everyone well absolutely and you know obviously you're on the engineering side but you know also on the 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 flip side of that from a standpoint of operating those plants there's uh, you know certified operators both in treatment and distribution that are you know required to maintain and and again supply that that safe safe drinking water you know per the Department of Health, Public Health regulations and uh, again that's the the whole purpose again of uh, you know of me doing this podcast is to to kind of let uh, you know potential students that are you know looking at you know forging their way out into a career path that uh, there are uh, you know great opportunities in this industry, not, not only from the operator certification standpoint, distribution, but also from the engineering side. And I think uh, your uh, focus on both construction and engineering is a, is a good insight into, you know, that window uh, because, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it, makes a, it takes a village and it takes a team, you know, to make it all happen. So uh, work, working from there. So, um, you know, I, you know what, some of the projects they're working on now, can you highlight a little bit? Or? Sure. No, we're doing, a, um, we're doing a, a booster station right now for aquarium water down in uh, Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Okay. And basically they, um, they have a, a, a water system there that doesn't have sufficient pressure to feed the community. So... Um, we constructed a, it's like a 16 by 22 masonry building on a, um, piece of property that Aquarian owns. We ran in a six inch, um, suction line to the booster station. There will be two booster pumps in the station Uh and then it'll go back out through a six inch line, um, back into their distribution system. Okay. So it was a, uh, it was a, it was a neat little project for us. It was the first one that we did in-house ourselves uh, by doing all of our own site construction yeah, yeah. and utility construction and um, our carpentry crews or you know put the roof on the building and did all the finish work and trim work um, our mechanical crew will go in and actually do all the piping and booster pumps and um, our uh, just wave your hand the light went off <laughs> yeah, we're back <laughs> we're back and uh you know fortunately we've we've teamed up with some good subcontractors to handle the yep. things that we we just don't do in house such as electrical yep yep and um you know it's all about the teamwork and the communication and treating people fairly and making building it, what you're supposed to build making it all happen and the other thing that too is is been uh, an into situation because uh you know a lot of the larger utilities like aquarian like a Connecticut water company okay 
are, are in a position that they have resources to thing. And, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of small, uh, when I started, there was a lot of small mom and pop utilities, okay, um, around the state and, you know, that couldn't keep up with the, uh, uh, the state regulations. And so, so the, the Department of Public Health can, you know, depending on the area of, you know, that the system was in, you know, he either went to a quarry, I'm here, you're taking the system over, or your Connecticut water, you're taking the system over. So that in itself, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of these larger utilities had to incur a lot of costs, okay, to upgrade the systems to accommodate, you know, all of the new drinking water regulations and, and uh, you know, standards and so forth. So, you know, that that's part of it, too. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, as the as the larger utilities absorb some of the smaller systems and make it their own, they have no choice but to, you know, uh, enlarge their staffing too to handle the extra sure. work they've just taken on. And it, uh, it it's it's really coming down to partnering with the right people that yep. uh, perform their contracts on time, on budget, safely. Yep. And um, just... It's, it's a simple business of just doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, yet there's so many moving parts nowadays that... that uh, Sometimes it's easier said than done. It's way easier said than done, and if you, uh, if you, if you can adapt to change and adapt to things that aren't going well, you're going to do okay, and that's just how, how you have to... You have to be open-minded. You, you can't... Uh, not think outside the box these days. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you got to make sure what's in the box is going to do the job. Right. You know, as far as that goes. So anyway, hey, going forward, Mike, you know, if you had any advice to give to, you know, uh, you know, people, uh, college seniors or, you know, uh, students that are just getting into, into college, what, what advice would you give them on as far as that goes? The biggest piece of advice I could give any young person that's uh, in college and starting to explore their, their career path is go work for a company that does what you think you want to do and actually get involved in the work. Don't uh, assume that what you're going to school for is, it, is your calling or exactly what you want to do and you wait until you're done and then you realize, hmm, maybe this wasn't the, the best the best choice for me so get involved get get hooked up with a company that's going to let you get your hands dirty and see the how this the show runs yep. and see how the sausage is made it, exactly <laughs> it's it's whether you're you're working for a water utility you're building a bridge you know you still have simple business principles that are going to make you succeed and um that's really what you got to do is sure. just Get in there and get involved and show that you're willing to, to work hard and the opportunities are, are going to keep coming. Sure, absolutely. You know, and that's the thing, you know, going back to, you know, looking at uh, colleges and so forth. College educations, is, uh, you know, are increasingly becoming more and more expensive. And, you know, you don't want to go down a path and uh, saying, okay, this is where I want to be. And then uh, all of a sudden you're, you're 40, 50, 60, $70,000 in debt with, with student loans. And then you say, geez, I don't know if I want to do this. Oh, you're a hundred percent right. And for someone that's questioning continuing education and getting a college degree and they don't think it's a right fit for them, there's very, very good opportunities in the trades, whether it's a carpenter or a plumber or sure. a laborer on a, on a highway crew, the, the 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 amount of opportunities is endless sure. and if you're willing to work you're willing to show up on time and you're willing to be a team player you the sky's the limit for yeah. you and you can make some good money uh you know the 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 pay and it's a secure thing you know i mean a lot of these um uh you know right now occupations as far as in the, in the trades are are are, are suffering, suffering and uh you know i'm you know in i'm in the sunset of my career and uh, you know it's it's being termed as the the gray tsunami mm -hmm. or in my case the bald tsunami mm -hmm. but you know uh we're all getting to the point uh of looking at retirement and you know you we got to start filling the pipeline uh for those young bodies to come in and start uh learning you know what we do and what we know uh because and, and unfortunately that's uh um a, a, a big um a drawback in a lot of industries today is, is you know, you, you have a, one guy walking out the door and they're bringing one guy in the door and there's no, 
never a twain shall meet. You know, you have to do some shadowing. You have to do some, you know, basically see how, again, the sausage is made and what's, how, how it all works uh, as far as that goes. Oh, no, that's very well said. And the, the, the notion that you're just going to pluck someone out of college and bring them in and set them down and say, okay, you're now a construction engineer, you're now a project engineer, and just assume that they're going to be able to run with it a false notion so yeah as a manager you have to be willing and able to spend uh, a fair amount of time with your people that you're developing to to make them into what sure. you need them to be mentor them yeah exactly and, and well and the thing too is is that you get to a point where you know uh the knowledge base that that you have or i have okay is is something that is, it takes years to uh, accumulate and and to pass that knowledge uh, off to, onto somebody on a on a piece of paper, this is how it's done. Because you know as well as I do, when you start building something and and, and building it off the print, and you 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 get out in the you know at the job site, and uh, what you thought you would work on paper doesn't work in the real life. Oh, absolutely no, and that's something I try to teach all of the people that I work with is uh, looking at what the intent is and trying to think it through and trying to find that one thing that might not work or find that one thing that can't work so you can yep. identify it soon enough so that it doesn't become a showstopper when it actually hits. Yep. And, um, yeah, because, uh, you know, change orders are not a good thing in a business. Well, I mean, they're, you know, a common part of the business, but by the same token, you want to keep those at a minimum. Exactly. You know, the notion of, oh, that's the change orders where you're going to make or break the job. Those, unfortunately, those days are done and gone. Yep. At this point, you want to get in, build your contract and, and get out and move on. If you do have to do some extra work, well, as long as everyone's on the same page and sure. and keeps it uh, realistic, then you do it. Fantastic. So anyway, great, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, so, hey, uh, on a personal note, what do you like to do for, for fun? What well, you, for fun. Uh, I know these, you have two kids. Yeah, okay. we do. We Our son, he's he's going to be nine in April, and our daughter, she's turning seven here in, in a couple weeks in January. So uh, we're trying to do a lot of stuff with them while they're young and enjoying enjoying the things that kids do and Man, they don't stay small long they, they sure don't it seems like yesterday we brought our first one home from the hospital and now he's uh he's uh, four foot something tall and yep. s- starting to uh to do little projects on his own so it sure goes fast which is awesome to see him grow and develop and um any any hobbies that you in, indulge in or you know, I, I've always been a, a huge uh, fisherman. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, over the last oh, 10, 15 years, I've, I do less and less fishing every year just because I get busier and busier with work or life. And um, yeah, yeah. just unfortunate, but uh, uh, I usually, I can usually get away for a week or so every year and go go relax a little bit. And I know Dad used and, to go fishing up in Canada, didn't he, for the, the big ones? Yeah, he, he always went to Canada every year for salmon fishing, and uh, he still... He hasn't gone. He hasn't gone to Canada because that, unfortunately, that um, that fishery kind of kind of declined over the last few years with just the commercial fishing. So yeah, it's yeah. really not worth it anymore. But yeah. um, now he, he he ventures wherever he can, whether it's Alaska or Montana, or spends a lot of time in Maine. So nice. Uh, I'm hoping I can get there someday to the point of. I hear if, you. if I want to go to Alaska for two weeks in August, I'm going to go, and I know my business is is, is, is going to sustain, sustain, and it's running itself for sure, for sure. You know, I, I, you, you know, that's that's the thing. You get to the point where, yeah, in, in your career, and you know, sometimes you, you, you got to take time to smell the coffee. <laughs> you you do, and you know, I I say there, you know, now at 41 years old, I've blinked, and 20 years have gone by, and and yep. working, and. The next twenty, I'll be, you know, starting to think about that retirement and how to transition it off and and phase it out. And it seems like a long way away, but it isn't. It's uh, it's right around the corner. All right, you know, one of the questions I always ask is, is uh, if you had a, uh, uh, if you're stuck on a desert island, okay, what food could you eat every day? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, probably a good burger. Okay. Yep, so a good burger, you can put whatever you want on it and change it up a little bit, but 
It's, they don't usually treat you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Archer, Director of uh, Construction Engineering at uh, Snyder Civil Engineering, is in the house uh, giving us his perspective on the uh, the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. So, Mike, thanks so much for coming down. I appreciate it. Thank Donnie for me, and uh, uh, good luck and happy new year uh, for 2023, which is coming up in a couple of days here. So thanks so much for coming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of our Careers You Didn't Know About with Mr. Mark Archer uh, from Snyder Civil Engineering, who's the head of construction engineering. So, Mike, thanks so much for coming down. I appreciate it. 